and welcome to Murphy's Garden. It's a bit of a windy uh, garden today. We've had quite high winds, um, which can mean a little bit of damage sometimes in the garden, which is a shame. But I've been asked by um, Justin on Instagram to do a video on grasses and just to talk a little bit about the grasses that we have growing in our garden. There's loads and loads of different grasses and I'm certainly no expert, but I do know a little bit about the ones I have in my garden. So I'm going to go through um, the ones that grow well for me. have had a bit of a problem with my mic, so um, I've got to be connected to to my camera, uh, my um, roaming mic's not working, so I've ordered a new one and hopefully we'll get that rectified for the next video, but it hasn't arrived in time. So anyway, we'll make a start. So the first grass I want to talk about is um, Steeper Gigantia, which you see growing behind me. It's an AGM awarded grass. Um, it's also known as golden oats and steeper means um, tow or rope. It was used as rope. It was woven together to um, make rope and um, that's why it's called steeper. It means, um, it means that in Greek. And um, so it's quite strong. These um, stems are quite strong and especially when they're woven together, they can be used to pull things. Um, so this grass, it grows well in full sun or semi-shade. A little bit of shade won't do it any harm, but we've got it growing here in full sun. Um, it likes free draining soil if possible. And um, I tend to grow it, it says in the books to grow it back a border or mid border. I quite like it front a border because although it is very tall, it is very tall, um, sort of, what would you say, seven, seven foot or something like that. But the thing with it is it's very opaque and very light and you can see through it. The thicker, denser foliage is all at the bottom and it produces these arching green um, leaves and you would class it as a as a, a evergreen grass however I find that it does after a couple of years it can get a little bit scruffy looking and um, you know have lots of brown leaves in it so I treat it like a, a semi evergreen and every year for the last few years I've just been cutting it right back and I did do a video um, probably about five or six months ago about how I look after the grasses in the garden and this was one that I absolutely leveled, cut to the ground. And the other thing I do with it that I find after about um, two or three years, it will start to bulk up and get bigger and bigger and quite fibrous in the middle. So what I've also started doing, because particularly this one, uh, these ones in this border, I don't want them getting too big and taking over the border. I want to be able to grow all the nice perennials around them. So what I've started doing um, probably every other year, but you don't have to do it as often as that, is just to dig the whole clump up with a spade, chop it in half and either dispose of or give away or use um, the other bit, that, and, but just to divide it and make it a little bit smaller. And I find that keeps it manageable because I do find with grasses, if you do let them get too bulky, it becomes a real job to try and uh, lift them and divide them later on. So that's what I tend to do. Um, it's a lovely grass. Um, the lovely thing about it, if you try and put it somewhere where it's either backlit or frontlit by the sun, especially the evening or the morning sun, it looks absolutely great. And I find because this, this border we can view from our house right down the far end of the garden, but in the, in the morning, early morning sunshine or the evening, it really is illuminated and it looks absolutely stunning in that context. And we've got one also by the pond as well, and that does the same thing. So you just need one plant because quite quickly you can split them. I've got um, six plants in these borders, one by the pond, and it was just the original one plant that I bought. Um, and I'm producing, I can produce plants all the time now. So you don't need to buy loads. You can, they, do, they can split um, quite quickly. I would say about splitting them, I did have a question about somebody had split them during the summer months. Don't pl split them in the growing season because because it's dry um, they will struggle a little bit so split them best time to split them is um, either autumn late autumn or early early spring preferably in their dormancy so do that and you'll be rewarded with um, lovely healthy looking plants and what happens to these in the wind occasionally they do snap like that one you can see has snapped and all you do is if that happens just cut it right to the base you can just leave them over the winter. So as the winter comes, just leave them. They look fantastic with ice and snow on them. They look really pretty. They will, over the course of the winter, they will gradually snap off lots of them. And as that happens, I just cut them down. So um, it's not a problem, but yeah, they, they, it's a really good grass. Absolutely love it. 
um, and it makes this nice rustly noise as well and it's also very good for drying so well it, to be honest it dries naturally on the plant but you can use them in um, big dramatic flower arrangements they look great for that so we'll move on to the next plant now the next little grass I'm going to do complete contrast to the last one so the other one was very big and this one is very little and very dainty and this one is called Breeza Maxima or um, Greater Quaking Grass. This is the seed packet that I grew it from. It's a Sarah Raven um, seed you can get from her, but lots of other places do it as well. Um, and this is a hardy annual. So it's something that we sow every year. Let me just got my secateurs here and I'll just cut a little bit off. That one's a bit dangly. So it's this very dainty, very pretty little grass. Um, a beautiful grass with um, stems that hung with um, pale green flowers and they look a little bit like raindrops if you can see um, and as they catch the light they look really pretty and they make this lovely little kind of noise in the wind as well so it's a lovely little grass and it's another one that dries really well and is lovely in flower arrangements too it just adds that sort of daintiness to the um, to the flower arrangement so it's one that I have started growing grew it last year and I've grown it again this year and I really like it now this is another grass that I've been growing from seed every year. This is um, Satara viridis, also known as um, fox, green foxtails. So this is a lovely grass to put in containers. Um, it says on the packet, and this was a packet that I got um, free with the Gardens Illustrated magazine. Um, it says it's a hardy annual and it has these strap-like leaves. Um, and graceful nodding panicles that mature from fresh green colour to caramel, giving the cultivar its name. So um, it's a popular choice for cutting and adding to flower displays, either fresh or dried. So this is another one I grow because I really, well, I like it in the, dis the pot displays, but I also really, really love it in um, flower arrangements. It looks lovely. So um, I will take that and just hang that upside down and then add that to lots of our arrangements and I'm finding I'm really getting into um, flower arranging and especially dried flower, flower arrangements so um, I'm always quite interested to try new things I'm not sure whether this it does say it self seeds a bit so I haven't really found that it does that but perhaps because I've always grown it in pots that hasn't been um, a thing for me but it might come back if it's in a border perhaps it would come back every year if it's if it's allowed to self seed Another grass, and the nice thing about grasses, and you'll see particularly on a day like today, which is very windy, is that they add movement to the garden. They rustle in the wind, they add a bit of noise, and they are very good at combating wind. They don't have any problems with being flattened or anything like that. So quite robust and really good for a windy garden, which our garden unfortunately is. And this one is called, um, this is a miscanthus. I love miscanthus. It's one of the very best ornamental grasses and there's lots of different kinds. I have got another type growing um, in the sunken garden, but this one is called um, miscanthus yakashima dwarf. So it's meant to be a slightly smaller miscanthus. It doesn't look that small, but I think it's meant to be. And it's got this, um, just get my secateurs, show you the leaf. So it's got this nice um, white stripe up the leaf. It looks quite nice just when it's in leaf but the main thing that we grow it for is these um it has these lovely um plumes that are flowers that come out um they're sort of pink brown flower plumes and they age to silvery color and they come in sort of autumn early autumn um and then they'll last all over the winter so they'll stay like that over the winter giving the garden really really good winter interest and the, it really does it looks one of the stars in the borders during the winter months and when it's got frost and ice on it it looks really really beautiful I'll try and post some pictures of what it looked like this winter um, the other advantage of it is that um, fantastic for flower arrangements again and also again for really good for um, dried flowers but I really like it for that and even the leaves look quite nice in amongst flower arrangements as well these lovely long slender leaves so it's a really good one again for the garden but also for the vase and flower arranging and I'm now in the sunken garden and this is another miscanthus that I've got um, and I bought this from a nursery and really stupidly it didn't have a label on it and I asked them what it was called and they said they didn't know but 
I don't like it when I have plants and I don't know what the name of them are. So I've just taken the Miscanthus, the Yakushima dwarf one, and this one just to compare. And they are different. This is the Yakushima dwarf, slightly broader leaf, and this one's slightly slimmer, but it has got the white up the middle. Um, I think this one's a taller. A, oh dear. I think this one is a. I think this one is a taller Miscanthus, but I don't know the name. If anyone can help. Uh, let me know but it could be lots of different ones the way to distinguish it is when it gets the flower plumes on it we might have a bit more of an idea we might be able to work out what it is so that one's getting quite big now in this area it's very bare in this area because um, this is just in front of the lime trees and what my intention here is to do is what we want to do is put the white bench in here we're going to have this as a little seating area and I wanted the miscanthus either side if I just pan round here um, the other miscanthus, I had to l dig that up um, because what happened was this area, um, we had some big tree stumps at the back here. Um, they were from old when we had the conifer trees in here. And what we did, it's hard to imagine now because that's what, that board is all growing up. But um, when it had died right back, when we had the digger, we drove the digger right across the border into this area and we used it to, um, to dig out the... Um, the tree stumps which worked really well we got them out but the season was getting on a bit and our attention was to get on and move the box and put the seat in but the summer came and we, we haven't had time to do that so um, and if I move the box now there's a danger that it would just die it's too dry so we're just going to leave it for now it's interesting to see we had loads and loads of weeds in here yesterday and um, today I've just been going through weeding but it's interesting to see we've got some um, Nicotiana um, which is self-seeded from last year. I always called it um, Nicotiana, but I've heard somebody else call it Nicotiana, and I think that probably is the, perhaps the right way of saying it, so I'm learning that. So that has self-seeded, so I've just left those in just to enjoy them, but there's a lot of bare soil here. But that Miscanthus, I didn't replant because I thought we were gonna get on and do the work, and we didn't, so I must admit I've been forgetting to water it, and it's looking a bit sad, but I will water it and then if all else fails I can always just split that one and put another bit over there. So that's what that is. So another Miscanthus. Miscanthus, really recommend growing Miscanthus. It's absolutely lovely and that one will have the lovely plumes on it as well. And we're now in the woodland garden and this is a lovely little grass and I think I got this at a plant fair actually and um, it's really nice and it's a, an evergreen grass, it's here all the time, and it's called um, Lazula nivea. Um, just have a look at the flower heads on it, it's nice. And um, I use that all the time in flower arrangements, it's really good um, and it lasts ages, so it can be used um, for over, you know, you can renew the fresh flowers and leave that in, in situ and it's, it looks good and also would look lovely with um, dried arrangements as well. So I've just got it growing here. I've got it in a couple of clumps around the garden. Yeah, and I really I do really like it. So the next grass on my list or on my, in my garden is this one. This is a penicetum or fountain grass. And this, is, this one's called Carly Rose. And it's growing for these beautiful um, pink, purple pink plumes. Um, there's loads of different types of penicetum and I've got my book here. This is um, the Jay Parker book and in it there are, I just put my glasses on, there's lots and lots of different um, penicetums. This one, Carly Rose, it says this is a giant ornamental grass with soft rose purple fluffy plumes and it will reach a height of 90 to 120 centimetres. Um, I don't think mine's as big as that. There's lots of other ones. There's another one called Little Bunny that looks very lovely as well. Unless that's what mine is. Perhaps mine is Little Bunny. Oh, I don't know. But I ordered it from Jay Parker. I'm not quite sure, but I thought I think it's Carly Rose. I'm pretty sure. In fact, it is Carly Rose because I've got the, the receipt. So um, that's lovely. And the nice thing about this one as well is that it um, also looks amazing in um, flower arrangements. I keep saying that, but they, they do. Grasses add um, a lot of interest to the garden, but also flower arrangements just look brilliant with them in it just adds the sort of lightness and airiness to a flower arrangement and in fact Olivia is it going around the garden at the moment picking little bunches of flowers that she's going to dry so we'll perhaps catch up with her and see what she's picked but um, yeah that's another lovely one 
And this, this one here, this grass here is a Carex and this is a, an evergreen grass, so I don't cut this back at all. And it adds this nice um, yellow color and I've got it growing in front of this newly planted Catina, so it looks quite nice, the contrasting color. This one isn't good in flower arrangements. It doesn't, you can't really, doesn't really work in that context, but it looks nice in pots. And I have got, it, I'll show you a pot around there that I've got it growing in. So um, I just leave it in the pots and add, change all the, um, like I put pansies in there, take the pansies out and then put the summer plants in and just leave the grass in there all the time. So that looks quite good. And while I'm in this part of the garden, if I just pan the camera around, you'll see the um, lovely steeper, I'll just move it up a bit and see that lovely steeper behind. And I really like this one. This is the original steeper that I grew and it works really well next to the pond and it re is reflected in the water of the pond as well. So that looks good. And here is the, um, the grass. In fact, I don't think this is the same one. This is a different one, but this is growing just in the pot and it just adds, just adds a bit of, um, a bit of different texture to the, to the containers as well. So that looks quite good. It's some sort of Carex, I'm not sure which one. I'm now here in the, what I call the butterfly borders. And um, this was planted with a view that it is really windy and it is today, very windy part of the garden. And all these plants kind of blow around and look a bit wild and a bit naturalistic. And that's okay. This is um, Anuthra or Goralandimery as it used to be called. It's lovely. Um, it, um, it's very pretty um, and it's just, but it is kind of getting a bit flattened really. We've got this westerly wind coming in, as you can see, and it's buffeting the, um, even the Amelanchia is getting blown around a lot. So in this part of the garden, we've got this, um, the Anathra, and then I've also got this grass. This is, um, this is a Melina grass. It's called Melinia Carulia um, Strathling Quill. And I've just looked up um, what Carulia means because in this part of the garden as well, I've also got um, this lovely um, plant. Can you see? see? Uh, this lovely plant, little blue, little blue flower, and it's called Cupid's Dart is its um, name. And it's also called, its Latin name is Catanash Carulia. So it got, got me wondering, what does Carulia mean? because it's, this is Strathling Quill Carulia, the grass, and this flower has also got the Carulia name in it. And I've got this book, which I love this book. It's a super, super book. If any of you um, want to sort of try and understand Latin names a bit more, it's really, really good. And um, when you look any, any word up, so, well, I was calling it Carulia. So for a start, it says it's Cerulea. So it should be pronounced S-E-E, -E, Ceruleus, instead of Carulia. So Ceruleus, and it means dark blue, as in Passiflora Cerulea. So it means dark blue. So anything with Cerulea in it means it's blue. So that tells us that this flower is blue, which it is. And this grass, when it will develop a bit later on, it will have this um, blue blue tinge to it. So that's interesting to know. So we're always learning, always learning new things. So Cerulea, not Carulia, Cerulea. So um, yeah, so that's another lovely grass. Um, it, it, it's not as beautiful as some of the other ones, I must admit. It looks quite like ordinary grass, but I think as it becomes autumn, it will look a bit nicer. Now this part of the garden, um, we're trying to sort of revisit this area because it's under the hornbeam trees. And um, what I'm finding is, is that particularly on that side, which is in full shade, the planting just looks very haphazard and it doesn't look great. It starts off okay, but as the time goes on, it doesn't look good at all. So we want to have a bit more sort of uniformity with the planting and have the same plants running all the way up. So I'm doing an experiment and I bought this Hakonokloa. We've seen Hakonokloa, it's very sort of in vogue in fashion at the moment. We've seen it in lots of gardens. It gets this um, nice, so these nice blades of, of grass um, and they're quite a sort of bright green color. So they look quite nice, the color. Um, so I've, they like shade, um, which this, this, this side is sort of semi-shade, which is why I've put some here because I want to see whether it performs or not. It's actually doing quite well. They do like quite moist soil, which this definitely isn't. So another reason why I'm experimenting before I 
plant the whole lot. So we'll see how it does. And this one is called Hakonocloa macra all gold. Um, Hakonocloa comes from, the word comes from Hakon in Japan. So that's why it's called that, Hakonocloa. And Cloa means blade of grass. And it really is, it's got this um, very thick blade of grass. So that's why it's called Hakonocloa. So we'll see how it does. And if it works well, then perhaps this is something we can plant a bit more of down this, you know, down this path. And I have bought some um, hydrangea as well to put in along this area too. So we'll see how that does. And in my container here, I've got this little grass and this is a grass, um, this is Lagerus ovatus or bunny tail grass for obvious reasons. It's got this very fluffy little tail and um, it's got some sort of bits that come out of it when you tap it. Um, but we're using this again in floral arrangements as well. It's lovely. And um, I did learn actually from Blooming Grey, another YouTube channel, she's a florist, that you can get this in, um, this is bunny tail grass, but you can also get um, hair tail grass as well which is apparently bigger and it's got longer stems which is better for flower arrangement this is good for um, little posies but not really good for bigger um, bigger arrangements so that's interesting and perhaps something we need to look out for so this little part of the garden the quadrant garden is really what i would class as my picking areas but most of the flowers that i pick for the vase come from here because I think it's very packed with um, flowers and you kind of get up close to the flowers, whereas I find the borders up the top, if I put things in there, they tend to get a bit lost. So I need big things in there. These are more delicate little flowers. I just want to show you um, while I'm here, actually, this is, um, I've, I've moaned in the past about hemorrhocallus because they were coming up everywhere. And um, I've just got the sort of basic um, orange ones and they were very boring and I took a lot of them out. Well, a lady I know um, offered me some different types of ones so she's given me this one this is called Chicago Sunrise it's a yellow hemorrhocallus and it's so much nicer than the the orange one it's got these much bigger flower heads and just nicer really um, and next to that you'll also see this is called Allium the hair for obvious reasons it's just quite cute isn't it um, and these are just calendula and I, I love this these colors together so that's a really nice picking combination with them um, the salvia and the calendula. So anyway, I digress. But lots of these flowers are just things that we've grown from seed um, that we just pop in and then we, we can pick from. So I'm just busy adding a few more grasses. Um, this is the, um, this is the, is this the breezer? Oh, this is the um, greater quaking grass. Um, you can just see it's starting to get the little, um, like little raindrops on it. So I'm just going round um, with more grasses because I like to be able to pick flowers and grasses at the same time and this is another one that I've grown from seed. Um, this is called Chasmanthium latifolium, I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, um, but it says here that it's a beautiful and delicate upper story perennial grass, easy to grow and elegant, a widespread garden plant in America but not widely grown here as it should be. So um, you guys may have heard of this but um, I haven't so I'm going to give this a go and it's it gets quite tall it said it gets to 90 centimeters so I'll put it a little bit further back in the borders and I'll just pan around and show you some of the other flowers that we can pick um, that's the lovely salvia viridos which is a new one grown from seed um, and we've got some roses there and that's just Ami, Ami Majors and then just add, I've got some stocks and things in here, which I'm just adding. I've just got some things that are left over, so I don't want to waste anything. More of that salvia. I've got loads of that. I grew that from seed, so I meant it's meant that I've got so much of it, so I can really um, spread it around the garden. And then the, the drumstick alliums are really lovely for flower arranging as well. And we've also got the stocks. They're not, the, the stems aren't very long on those. They're not great for putting in vases. Um, and yeah, I've just been adding, I've got a few cleoms, got, I grew loads of cleoms this year and that's another thylictrum, that's the one we bought recently at Hodnet. So I'm quite pleased with these borders, I think they're looking quite nice. 
unfortunately she didn't bite the grass the grass isn't that great and next to this achillea that's a nice color combination we've got the dark um, purpley color penstemon next to the white achillea and then just behind it you can just make out just in front of it i should say is this is another hemercallus and this is another one that i was given so it's called i think this one must be starling it's a dark maroon flower with golden yellow throat so it hasn't opened yet so i'm quite excited to see what that looks like and i see the dahlias have come back so that's good because i wasn't sure if they would survive the winter and there's another hemerocallus so i'm quite excited to see what they're going to look like when they come out so i'm just going to prepare the ground just by weeding the area first because there are quite a few weeds so i'm just going to get this grass in the ground as well so it's being planted sort of not right at the back but sort of mid mid um depth in the border because it is a little bit higher hopefully this grass and then i'll just finish by giving it a little bit of a watering just to make sure it gets established. I won't really water it much after that, really. I think we are forecast a little bit more rain. So we've got lots of different types of grasses growing in the garden. And I'm going to go and catch up with Olivia because she's going around the garden as we speak, picking flowers and um, picking grasses to make little posies, which I think she's drying. So we'll go and have a look at and see whether she wants these to add to her um, collection. So we're going to have a look at some of the little posies that she's done. So we've just been round. I've got my lovely daughter Olivia Hello. home from uni. Picked her up yesterday from uni, and um, we've just been picking some flowers. And we've been using the grasses just to add to the flower arrangements. And I'm no flower arranger, but um, they just look so lovely. Just so easy to make them look lovely with all these grasses and the movement just is um, beautiful and I love all these colours. So Olivia's done kind of yellow themes and these lovely little pretty little posies as well so it, it's just so easy to make some really nice gifts and presents for people and it's just a joy to pick all these flowers that are growing in the garden. So thank you very much for watching and join us again in the next video. Bye for Bye now. now.